Look, everyone knows Incineroar is amazing competitively, but it always just does the same exact stuff and it's super predictable. Which is why I really want to try to capitalize on this solid natural attack and make this bad boy a sweeper instead. So first we can set up using Bulk Up, which gives us plus one in both attack and defense. This then allows us to potentially take a super effective hit, which also activates a weakness policy, giving us plus two to both attack and special attack. We use Flame Charge to boost speed, which when ran jolly max speed EVs allows us to outrun a lot of threats. All these boosts by themselves are nice, but we've been working toward one goal, Power Trip. Power Trip is a 20 base power dark move that gains plus 20 power for each of the user's stat boosts. And when set up properly, this becomes an absolute delete button. We can also run Drain Punch for some potential longevity, and overall people just don't usually expect Incineroar to be this type of monster. So Incineroar is the prime example of a guy that when you use it just a little bit differently than people expect, it can go a long way. That's what I try to do most of the time over here, and if you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Petcha Runt. This thing is a Petcha. It's a Runt, and it's here to basically just poison you and turn you into a puppet. I don't know. But, I have a Spider who obviously doesn't worry about getting poisoned, and I can just kind of freely set up my Sticky Web here. As they actually decide to just go for that Shadow Ball, gonna do some chip damage, but most importantly, break my Focus Sash, as I just spread my little spidery web over there. So, whenever I'm working with Sticky Web, I always, kind of the main thing I prioritize is looking at what their hazard control would be. Looking like it's mostly just gonna be in the form of the Iron Treads over there having Rapid Spin. So I do have a Ghost Type and Decidueye to potentially swap into that if need be, but I wanna try to keep those Sticky Webs up because it's gonna help out. So, I know that, you know, they went for a Shadow Ball last turn, maybe they go for it this time, I can freely switch into this weird fact. I'm using gumshoes a lot lately because I want to try to get this thing to work, and it's, it's not easy. So they actually end up going for the parting shot, which is annoying because it now gives them a pivot and also makes my already horrible offenses just even worse. And then they greet me with this friggin' steel bird, and I cannot touch a Skarmory whatsoever, so I decide I'm gonna go ahead and swap into the Sandy Cheeks, aka Sandy Shocks, just because if this thing does have defog, that's fine, I can get a free switch in here and kind of, you know, and threaten this thing out with some electric. So it turns out they're actually just going to set up the Stealth Rock of their own, which is fine, because Sandy Shocks has a really good matchup here. Now, I imagine they probably swap out not wanting to just take a Thunderbolt and die, so I can take this opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock here. So, with a little bit of momentum on our side, we're able to just go ahead and stack our hazards up here, as they actually end up switching into the Iron Treads at this point. So, it does get caught up in the Sticky Web. Obviously, we are going to be faster, uh, especially with that Sticky Web, but now we set up that Stealth Rock, and this is actually... A pretty decent opportunity for me to potentially switch into the Decidueye here, knowing that they're probably just going to go for the Rapid Spin. But as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? If they don't go for a Terra Flying, they just die to an Earth Power. And I know that I'm going to be able to outspeed it and Earth Power the hell out of it and it does take care of it. So the Sticky Web Speed Drop not only allows us to grab that free kill there, but also the Sticky Web is going to stick around because they didn't get to Rapid Spin that away. So that feels pretty good. Don't have to worry about the webs being taken care of. And at this point, on the Revenge Switch, they can decide to bring in Tyranitar. So the situation is, they know that they obviously I have the power of the damn Earth on my side with the Stab Earth power. Gonna do a decent bit to a super effective Tyranitar, but I'm just gonna go for it again. I figure, you know, there's really no reason not to here. And they're actually gonna go ahead and bust out the Terra this time. This time it is gonna be the Terra flying. So Tyranitar with the balloons on his head, he is ready to party, and now he's just floating above the ground. Which is not great for me, because obviously now Earth Power is not going to do anything, and uh, Tyranitar now has the option to just go for that Earthquake. But the good thing is, at full health, I live a non-stab Earthquake, which is amazing. So, this thing kind of put itself in a corner, right? Because it, obviously it dodges the Earth Power, but now I have a super effective stab Thunderbolt versus it, and I'm like, this should be this should be good for me. I'm just going to, is this a Sandy Shocks highlight? What's going on here? This The Shocks is going crazy and looking punk rock at the same time. So, I go for that Thunderbolt. It doesn't do very much damage at all. I'm thinking, is this an Assault Vested Tyranitar? Holy shit, that thing just ate that up. So, that kind of ruins the Sandy Shock plans and another Earthquake is going to take care of my prehistoric ass Magneton. So, we've got the Tyranitar down low enough. It's chipped to the point where I have a pretty easy time versus it. But also, this looks like a great opportunity for Chester freaking Cheeto to come in here and do some Incineroar nonsense. So, it's also funny to note that Tyranitar taking chip damage from its own Sandstorm is hilarious because now it's no longer Rock-type, but I come in, I get that Intimidate, which is super important. That's mostly just because I know for sure, especially after a bulk up, I can take a super effective hit, and that's exactly 
what we want to do with this incinerar. So I go for the bulk up. I am faster, of course. I am max speed on this bad boy, and we have the webs on our side, or on their side, I guess. But I go for the stab rock slide, able to live it thanks to the bulk up, and also activates the damn weakness policy. So now we're sitting pretty well boosted. We've got plus three attack, plus one defense, and plus two special attack, and that is gonna work out pretty well for our guys. So the bad news is we do take Sandstorm Chip, but we also do have a decent bit of health left. So I know that I'm faster already. However, I wanna guarantee not only that I kill the fella, but I also get myself another stat boost and guarantee that I'm faster than literally everything they have, especially with the sticky web. So the Flame Charge is gonna take care of the Tyranitar in the process, giving us uh, a nice little speed boost. And now, although it has not been revealed yet, Power Trip is, it's gonna hurt. It's, it's super powered up at this point. And now we get to see what we can do with the Incineroar here. So, they decide now to go into the Dragapult. Does get affected by that sticky web, showing it's not clear body, mostly infiltrator or something like that. But the good news is, with that uh, speed drop from it and our speed boost, we should be faster than the Dragapult here and we can take a nice little peek at all our stat boosts. So, I can just go ahead, outspeed here, go for that stab power trip, and that just, just completely deletes the guy. Down goes the Dragapult. Always fun seeing Incineroar outspeed stuff that it generally just never does, and uh, that takes care of a pretty big threat. So the Sandstorm, putting us on a little bit of a timer, not too big of a deal because, look, we don't need that much. And as they go now into a Skarmory, generally a fella that can take physical hits, I decide to go for a power trip. It's going to be much stronger than a stab flame charge and a super effective hit, and that just straight up it takes care of it. it. Skarmory had no shot, and <laughs> that also is extremely satisfying. Incineroar is the damn goat. So they're now down to two Pokemon left, I believe. It's Cleaver, and it's going to be that Petra Runt from earlier. As Cleaver comes in, does take some Stealth Rock damage. We know that we're going to be able to outspeed, even if this thing is Scarf, just because that Sticky Web and our boost from the Flame Charge. I just go for that Power Trip, and we're just out here Power Tripping the hell out of fools. That's pretty much what this Incineroar does. I am upset that I didn't get to Drain Punch that Tyranitar. From Team Preview, I was like, oh, Drain Punch is going to be very satisfying versus that thing. But then it went Terra Flying and kind of ruined the plans on that. But it turns out we didn't even need our health back because as their final mon is going to be this Petrarunt, we obviously have the super effective power trip here. And we're still chilling at 36 HP. And if it, it, a little bit of overkill here, I decided to go for the Terra Dark just because I'm like, hey, what if somehow this thing can just live the power trip without an extra boost? I'm going to guarantee that we get the full damn body bag with the Incineroar here. And uh, we go for that Terra Dark, just to boost it just a little bit further. And yeah, you probably guessed it, the Power Trip is going to... We're, we're making berry stew out of the fella tonight. And a little bit of leftovers for breakfast, even. So that's going to take care of it, and that is going to be the end of the game. And that's how this Incineroar is supposed to work, which is satisfying and ridiculous. So with that, we're going to bring it into game number two, because you already know we're out here with some more. So this time my opponent has a pretty interesting looking team, also full of some pretty big threats. And at this point, if you've stuck around this far into the video, you should probably just hit that like button because it does help out the channel and I don't know, just hit the button or something. With that, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time I decided to switch it up a bit. Now they lead off with the freaking staple remover. I kind of expected a Dawn fan lead. You know, trying to go, them expecting me to lead off with the uh, Ariados, but instead, it's it's freaking Archaladon. And Decidueye does not like this matchup nearly as much as it would with the Dawn fan, so I decide I should probably get the hell out of here. Now, uh, I'm actually just going to go right into the prehistoric ass Magneton. That's just because this thing cannot go for its electric shenanigans. And I can also set up my Stealth Rock, but more importantly, kind of threaten it out with an Earth Power. So, it actually works out pretty nicely for us, because they actually go for the Thunder Wave. It does not affect... Our little fella here, and here's the situation. Most of the time, I would click Stealth Rock here, but I imagine they probably go right into the Dawn Fan. And what I don't want to happen is to go for Stealth Rock and then know that it can live in Earth Power. So I want to kind of, can you kind of capitalize on the fact that I would switch into Dawn Fan at this point. So I decide to go for the Earth Power. That's just because it does a huge chunk of damage to the fella. Not only that, but also now we just outspeed and I can finish it off with another Earth Power. So taking care of the Dawn Fan is kind of the first thing on the checklist because now I know that I can potentially get my sticky web up, don't have to worry about a rapid spinner, and these hazards are here to stay. Also, Don Fan is just an annoying bulky fella if you're a physical attacker, so taking care of it is always nice. However, at this point, they can now go into event Revenge Switch. They decide to bring in the Circle Bear. Now, one thing that's kind of funny about Ursa Ring is it can use Eviolite now, which makes it a whole lot more bulky. And as I take this opportunity to set up my rocks, just to kind of see what this thing wants to do, it's actually just going to go for the Avalanche, which does do a bit over half. Leftover is going to put us in a spot where I feel like I can take one more, and it's also now going to activate its gut. So I'm like, okay, I definitely cannot take one, and 
it's uh, not Eviolite. So it's just going to be a full-on Guts Bear. And I'm like, this thing's this is fine, right? I'm not very afraid of an Earth Ring. I go for the Thunderbolt just to get some nice chip on the guy as they actually just finished me off with a Trailblaze, which is kind of crazy. It gives it a speed boost and also just straight up knocks me out. And I'm like, am I afraid of this Earth Ring? Hold on a second. I'm... I'm kind of afraid of this Earth Ring. Until you realize this thing has a base speed of like negative 20. And then I'm like, oh, even with even with the Trailblaze, it's probably not going to be that quick. I don't know. I decide to go into Incineroar regardless just because that Intimidate. And no matter what set you're working with, Intimidate Incineroar is just always damn good. And with that minus one, I'm feeling like I can easily take an attack now. I go for the bulk up. It actually outspeeds, revealing this thing was not going to be... Uh, it's not probably a plus it get jolly max speed, so it probably has some defensive bulk investment there with, you know, some EVs, and they go for the high horsepower, which I'm able to not only take because of the nice little bulk up, but also activates our weakness policy, which is exactly what we're looking for, and while we don't have the sticky web up, this kind of puts me in a position where I need the incinerator to boost up his speed, you know, just kind of solo out here, so... As much as I want to drain punches to get a little bit of health, I obviously have to go for that flame charge. And that's just going to take care of the bear, which is perfect. Not looking so scary now with your health at zero, are you, Mr. Mr. Ring Bear? So, that takes care of Ursa Ring, and we're basically at this point kind of seeing what they want to do in terms of working against this uh, different Incineroar. So, they're going to go into the Grim Snarl, and that's actually kind of fine with me. I know the Grim Snarl probably just wants to set up screens. And it's also not much of an offensive threat, you know, versus Incineroar here. So they decide to go for the Reflect, which is fine. I actually decide to go for the Drain Punch here, just in case they went for, you know, a play rough. I could just outspeed, get a bunch of health back, and plus one defense allow myself to take that. So uh, I do get a nice little bit of damage and also some health back here. It does reveal it's going to be Rocky Helmet, which is kind of nice because it means it's not Light Clay. But I'm just going to continue to fire off Drain Punches here. I actually quite don't have quite enough damage to knock it out with that second one. Uh, but then I'm like, this is fine. I can live a play rough, especially at this health. And uh, Rocky Helmet does hurt the fists a little bit. But it actually reveals it's going to go for the Leech Life. But it does not have the play rough. Or Leech Life is an interesting you know, coverage option for the, the, the Snarl there. We were able to take that real nice. It's probably uh, like dual screens, Leech Life, and then like a Dark Stab or something like that. It does reveal the Sucker Punch, which is going to be resisted. And we're defensive, and we live it easily. So I can now just Flame Charge the guy and get myself another speed boost. So... We're now sitting with our speed doubled. I do take the chip from the Rocky Helmet, and Incineroar once again is in a position where we're faster than everything, and we have a whole bunch of stat boosts, and now we get to show it off. So, in comes Inteleon, and this is a slithery, fast little fella most of the time, and he's very skinny also, aerodynamic as hell. But I am, in fact, faster with that plus two speed. I can then go for the power trip, and with those boosts we have, just straight up takes care of the Inteleon. And uh, while we're just still chilling at, like... 10 HP, in comes Archaladon. And the one thing is, it can live a power trip if I don't have a bo an extra boost. So I decide to go for the Terra Dark just to boost it even further, but Buddy does not want to even see the end of that. He's like, you know, I'm out of here on this Incineroar. <laughs> Buddy did not expect it, and that's what we're looking for. So that's the end of that one, <laughs> which is a funny run there. But um, that's also going to now bring us into our bonus battle number three. I figure, why not just toss another one here? This Incineroar is fun to play with. And we have a match here against a team that is very scary just because it has some sun threats and that is always an uphill fight. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time as we're dealing with, it turns out, a Grim Snarl lead, I make the wrong guess again. I lead off with the Sandy Shocks because I kind of expected them to go Torkoal, expecting me to go Ariados and it doesn't really work out. But then I'm like, this is also a good option because I can just set up my rocks and just be on my little Magneton way. So they are going to go for that light screen, because of course every Grim Snarl will just be light screen and reflecting, and I just set up my little stones over there. Say, so, hey, step on these when you switch in, guy. Torkoal's going to potentially rapid spin, but, you know, that's fine. So I'm now just going to go for some chip. I realize I don't really have a switch option here. I just need to kind of see what they want to do. Turns out they're going to parting shot. So it means that they do not set up the reflect, which is going to be good to know. It's probably light clay, so that light screen's going to stick around for a while. Um, and my Thunderbolt's not going to do, you know, at least a whole lot. So, they actually pivot into the Walking Wake here. Now, the Wake is like, hey, this is a good time to be a Walking Wake. I come in, I'm behind a light screen. As I go for the Thunderbolt, I not only get the critical hit, but I also get the Para. And it turns out it was not a good day to be a Walking Wake. And that kind of, that, that hurts. So, <laughs> it's good for me at least, because now Walking Wake was a huge sun threat out of the way. Or at least, you know, mostly out of the way. It's basically dead and, you know, paralyzed. So, I can now just go for a Volt Switch. If they wanted to sack the thing, that's fine. And uh, it turns out they're actually going to switch into the Ninetales here. So, 
does set up that drought, and important to note, it also does give me Protosynthesis, so Sandy Shocks does enjoy you know, a little speed boost action, but not in this situation. As I just Volt Switch, their main Sun Threat's gonna be Venusaur along with that Walking Wake. So with Walking Wake already kinda out of the way, it also makes the job a whole lot easier for potentially Incineroar. So I decide I'm just gonna go right into Chester now. I, I kind of feel like, you know, this thing doesn't really threaten me that much offensively. If it wants to Encore me into a bulk up, it kind of so be it. But I'm gonna try out the old Incineroar here. So I realize, you know, this thing, it doesn't have a whole lot that it can do to me. Again, the Encore would kind of be its best bet. It's gonna be faster, however. So as I go for the bulk up here, they actually decided to switch. They probably realized, I don't know what this thing is gonna do. I don't know. The Incineroar just kind of. It puts decent pressure on Ninetales, so they actually switch into the Torkoal here, which is kind of fine by me. You know, they can bring this thing in. It, it, they're also working with double drought setters, by the way, but as I go for that bulk up, um, I imagine they can just go for a rapid spin and kind of get rid of that. They also have potential earth power for a super effective hit, and that's kind of what I want to happen, obviously, because of that weakness policy. So I decide to go for the flame charge. It is going to be boosted by the sun and that bulk up, which is nice. So it does a nice little chunk to the guy. Uh, but they do end up going for that rapid spin. Wanted to get rid of that stealth rock. At least now, walking weight can come in without dying. Um, but most of, I don't really care that much about it. So I'm actually thinking about it. I'm going to go for just another flame charge here. At plus two speed, I am going to be faster than a Venusaur even in the sun. Because I am just a plus speed nature and max speed. So even with Venusaur in the sun, with its speed doubled, we should be able to outspeed it, and I thought I was going to be real clever with that. So I'm now at plus two, but the bad news is they go for a freaking yawn, which does kind of just ruin... Definitely Incineroar going to sleep is not going to be great for me, but I'm able to finish it off with a power trip, and I do at least still have a whole ton of health. So they're going to have to hit me on the special side if they want to knock me out kind of before I wake up, and if I can wake up, it's gonna be a bad. It's gonna be a bad day for them. So they decide now to bring in the Grimmsnarl once again. This thing probably just wants to uh, kind of just dampen my offenses here with the Reflect, and that's fine by me. Honestly, burning sleep turns is kind of. Uh, well, I'm gonna see if I can just outlive the sleep here and still get Incineroar to pop off. So I go for a bulk up on the sleep turn. They are going to obviously Reflect, and uh, once again, if they want to go for a play rough, I, I know it. I can take it kind of no problem because most of the time these things are not going to be invested at all in offenses. So at this point, I'm just continuing to click bulk up. They're actually going to end up switching out. They wanted to get up that reflect most importantly, but again, I'm fine with that just because that means that I'm just burning sleep turns and surely the, the clock is a ticking. I'm going to end up waking up here soon. Not, not yet, but soon. So as they go into the Venusaur, this thing is chilling in the sun with that chlorophyll. Going to be fast, but not faster than me at plus two. And at this point, I do not, in fact, wake up. Would have been an extremely satisfying wake there, but I don't, of course. But they, however, go for the Giga Drain. I probably expect a switch there, but the Giga Drain, real questionable play. Not even going to lie about that one. They, they go for the Drain, which just do doesn't help them out, really, at all. Obviously, it doesn't do any damage to me, and then they're like, oh, shit. This thing is definitely going to wake up here, and it's faster, and they know that a Flame Charge in the sun is going to hurt the fella. So they actually end up busting out the Terra Fire. Now, Venusaur... Lighting the thing on fire is probably not recommended, but it's at least going to allow it to live a flame charge. But joke's on them, I actually do wake up, and this time I click power trip, because I'm like, hey, this is probably my most damage anyway, and it doesn't really do too much. But now they go for a sludge bomb, and uh, with that little stab hit, it's going to do much more than Giga Drain, but uh, I'm able to just eat it up no problem. And here's the thing, so that last sludge bomb did like 66 damage, and I can take one more of them, which is great, but even though my next power trip isn't going to kill, I can pretty freely just go for a bulk up here, and then my next one definitely will. But they have different ideas, they actually decide to save the Venusaur, they're going to end up switching into Incineroar of their own. So, Spider-Man meme in full effect. I go for the bulk up here, which is nice because that Intimidate kind of sucks, but now the bulk up just brings me right back. And it also gives me that extra defense to be able to take hits here. So I want to go for the Drain Punch on this just because I definitely want to try to get some health back. And they actually go for the Fake Out. So there's going to be a much more standard uh, in Incineroar here. It does get that flinch. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but is mostly just annoying. At least the good news is I know that I can outspeed this thing. So I'm just going to continue going for Drain Punches here. It does come out uh, with that Reflect Up. Not going to do a bunch of damage, but it at least does just give me just a minuscule amount of health. It does bring me at least above half. And I know that I can take anything from this. So they actually go for the knockoff, which is going to get rid of my weakness policy. So not going to be activating any weakness policies today. Weedle would be pissed. But I can uh, now, I know I can take any hit this thing wants to throw at me. Plus, I'm just faster than everything. So I'm actually relatively free to just go for another bulk up. And this is the exact situation this Incineroar tries to get itself in. When they don't expect what this thing is going to do, they kind of just back themselves into a damn corner. 
And bulk up is going to give me not only just more bulk and more attack, just power up, power trip even further. And as they now go into the Nine Tails, the reflect wears off. And I'm like, ooh, now it's time for Poppy and Cineroar to do some damage. I can just uh, go for a power trip outspeeding anything that they want to deal with. But they are realizing that the only way through this is going to be trying to just dampen my offenses. So they're actually just going to swap right back into Incineroar. So while they get the sun up, it's not going to help them with Venusaur in the back. Because once again, with two flame charges, I am faster. I guess unless the Venusaur is timid. It, I, it is base 80, so it would be faster if it's plus speed nature. But most of the time on a sun team, they're going to be modest. But I go for that power trip. The Incineroar does live it, which is annoying. Because now it gets a Citrus Berry, but for no reason really. I can just now just... You know, go for that drain punch and get myself some more health. So, of course, they are going to fake out just one last little little cat slap for the road. We got ourselves a good old cat fight going on here. And uh, I'm just going to drain punch it again. So, that does take care of Incineroar, which is good because now this thing can't come in and intimidate us. And we are just straight up just being an absolute menace with the, with the Incin. So, it is going to dramatically fall back. Gets caught by the Pokeball. And now we get to see, can we finish it off with the Incineroar? would be so satisfying. So, in comes the Venusaur. We do know that we are faster than this thing, at least because, you know, we saw that we were earlier, so it's not going to be timid, but with uh, this thing on the candles on its head, I'm like, you know what? I can just power chip this thing into guarantee that I get a kill. The stat boosts have been confusing at this point because we've been intimidated and shit a whole bunch of times, but with that, uh, with that Terra Dark, we can just boost up our power trip even further and make sure that we look badass in the process and just go on a nice little... We're going on a trip of, of power. And uh, we, we packed all our bags already. So, Power Trip's going to come through. We are, in fact, faster when the sun's shining. And that's going to kill the Venusaur. So, this Incineroar is so much more fun to use than your standard parting shot, fake out, and knock off, and stuff. I don't know. Incineroar in general is just really good. But it's fun to use it, I guess, a little different. And this isn't super groundbreaking of a set. But it is different. And people just, I don't know. So, they're now down to three Mons left. And at this point, I realized Flame Charge in the Sun versus Power Trip with this Terra, I, I, I don't even know what does the most damage. I don't think either grabs a kill here. But I go for that Flame Charge, just thinking maybe I can get a sweet Flame Charge kill at this point. But it doesn't happen. And here's the thing. They go for a Play Rough, but I literally, I live with three HP. Those defensive boosts from the bulk up are amazing at that point, because I did not expect to live that. And as I can just finish this thing and the rest of their team off with the Incineroar, but he's probably like, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> that was the, the final straw, was me living that with what looked like probably one HP. But that's going to be the end of the game and the vid, and I thought this was just a fun time. So, again, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I do appreciate all the support from you guys lately, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Also, I'm going on a honeymoon in Japan in a few weeks, so go ahead and buy some merch so that I can, ha I can spend way too much money on Pokemon stuff. Thanks.